Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how to diagnose a Dodge Magnum uh, intake plenum failure using duct tape. Um, if, if you have access to a vacuum gauge that will come in handy, but it's not necessary. Um, so yeah, let's go uh, find us a leak. Okay, so first things first, this is a 1995 Dodge Ram 1500 with a 318 Magnum automatic, uh, two-wheel drive, regular cab, short box. 284,000 kilometers onto it, and um, I just did the fuel pump on it, and uh, so it fires up a lot nicer, but uh, it still runs really poor at idle. Got a bit of a shake to it. And uh, yeah, it's, it consumes a lot of oil, especially once it's warmed up. But you can hear how crappy it's running at idle. And it's got a bit of a pop. And uh, if you put your foot on the brake. Um, okay, one thing about this truck is it's OBD1, and the previous owner stuck a 46RE into it. So it's an electronically controlled transmission in a truck that needs the 46RH, which is a hydraulically controlled transmission. So that's. Uh, little bit of an interesting fact for you guys so I've got reverse neutral and drive which actually puts it into I think third or something like that it doesn't start off in first if you want to go to first you got to go to neutral wait for the rpms to stabilize and then right down to first But yeah, it's got no balls and it stinks. So I'll pop the hood and show you guys what to do to find that leak. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna notice is that um, my truck had the plastic fuel rails without the Schrader valve on it. So I needed to swap to the metal rails that did so I could check my fuel pressure. That's how I diagnosed my bad fuel pump. Um, but I do have to get the other lines off my parts truck and swap them and then this will be proper. Um, but anyways, you're going to want to find this hose. This is your crankcase breather. Um, that part is important. Second part is your PCV valve right here. Um, first thing we're going to do is pop that off of the intake. Uh, we're going to cap this and cap this with the tape that will prevent, if this is leaking, it'll prevent it from leaking vacuum into the crankcase. So we'll go ahead and tape those up and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so we've got this blocked off to prevent vacuum from uh, when that lower plenum is uh, leaking, um, it'll draw vacuum through the crankcase. So if this is not plugged, it will run rough. Um, so then we also plug that off to prevent a massive vacuum leak. Now we come back over to this side and pop this off. Now we'll fire up the truck and cover this with our thumb. Um, if this lower plenum is indeed popped, this will have massive vacuum coming out of it and it'll suck your thumb onto it. Um, this is also where a gauge can come in handy. You can tell um, if it's just a slight leak. Um, It'll have a little bit of vacuum, but it should have one or two pounds of positive pressure coming out of here because of the, the blow-by through your cylinders. So, I'll we'll fire up and we'll see what happens. Okay, so you're not going to want to run it long. But So I don't know how well you guys were able to hear that, but it, it was sucking my thumb quite good. So that is how we diagnose 
whether or not that gasket is breached. Um, another thing you could do is unscrew your uh, air filter assembly, open up your throttle body and stick a magnet down. If it sticks to the bottom there, you have the stock steel uh, plenum plate. If not, somebody's upgraded it to aluminum. If it's still leaking, you just need to replace the gasket. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, uh, leave a comment below letting me know what you guys thought of it, um, subscribe for more videos. Um, I'm going to be trying to do more helpful videos, more how-tos, that kind of stuff. Um, I do have a big project coming up on that Dodge. I'm going to be converting it to OBD2 so I can properly run that transmission. And um, yeah, so subscribe for more and uh, until next time, take care guys, thanks for watching.